The aim of this lecture is to introduce the concept of market regulation, its purpose and the role of state and regulatory agencies for energy market regulation. After this lecture, you will be able to understand why regulation is such an important element of public policy, who are the main actors that can regulate a market, and why the regulation of energy market is crucial. Countries that want to build an affordable, reliable, sustainable and modern energy system need to design an effective regulatory framework for their energy markets. But why should the market be regulated? In this lecture, you will explore the rationale for regulation in given sectors like public utilities and energy in particular. Next, you will learn who regulates markets and why the state often delegates its regulatory authority to external agencies. Lastly, you will apply this general concept of market regulation to energy policy, understanding why energy markets require specific rules and restrictions. When markets work perfectly, there is no need for direct government intervention, because the allocation of resources is already optimal. However, when this is not the case, regulation becomes necessary to correct so-called market failures. Market failures are all those situations in which the free market cannot deal to the price mechanism in the production and distribution of goods and services. There are a wide range of possible market failures in the different sectors of the economy. One example of failure is wherever a market is not perfectly competitive. If firms have some degree of market power, they can enforce high prices, which do not only reduce consumers' well-being, but are also inefficient for the economy as a whole. This may be due to the presence of economies of scale or anti-competitive behaviors. Another example of market failure is when economic activities have spillovers, so-called externalities, outside the market, as in the case of pollution. These external effects are not taken into account by the market. Thus, prices do not correctly reflect the overall social benefits or cost of the economic activity. A third example of market failure is information asymmetries, when quality of a product or the cost of a production are not evident. In this case, prices can again be distorted by the company that has some information. Whenever a market is characterized by some degree of market failure, such as market power, externalities of information asymmetries, appropriate regulation is essential to achieve the proper functioning of economic activity and balance consumers' and firms' well-being. The main goal of regulatory interventions is then to reproduce as closely as possible the outcome of a perfect market. Ideally, prices should be cost-oriented, mimicking a competitive market with no market failures. This way, policymaking can increase market efficiency and improving social welfare. Nowadays, the state rarely provides goods and services directly, but is more involved in managing public finances taxes and redistributions, and in defining rules, laws and regulation. In its role as a key regulator, it must ensure competition in each market with more than one firm and competition to access a market, for example, through competitive building mechanisms, when competition in the market is not legally or technologically feasible. The state, as a national regulator, is involved in a variety of different activities, defining legal standards, establishing rules and procedures, monitoring and enforcing compliance, fixing retails and wholesale charges. Regulation is a complex set of tasks, even conflicting ones. In many cases, central governments delegate regulatory tasks to independent regulatory authorities, ERAS. This was done extensively since the 1990s in the European Union. The main purpose of establishing independent agencies is to avoid conflict of interest between governments and partially state-controlled utilities. Thus, ERAs are not part of state departments or ministries, have financial independence, specialized staff and specific tasks. In particular, ERAs set prices, define entry conditions, quality standards and access rules for a given market. Here you can see that many EU countries established ERAs and soon afterwards they liberalized their energy markets for electricity and gas. Other public utilities such as telecommunications have been regulated and liberalized in the EU following a similar trend. Finally, it should be now clear why the energy sector should be regulated. 
The market is characterized by large infrastructure for production, transmission and distribution, which makes economies of scale highly relevant. Therefore, the energy market is typically dominated by few large firms operating with a high degree of market power. Moreover, energy can cause significant externalities, from oil spills to public goods like illumination of public spaces, that firms do not internalize when setting prices. Lastly, technological change in the energy sector requires long-term investments and risky innovations that are not easily priced by the market and that can be carefully targeted by regulatory bodies.